is, how is healing from a distance, even far away in another country, different from healing by the laying on of hands? There is literally no difference, none whatsoever, other than you get to touch the person when they're in your presence. Uh, whenever I was, um, matter of fact, there is a letter in your manual that was written, actually a couple of them actually, that were written by John Lake. And in it, he was actually talking about one of these things where he talks about the real spirit of intercession that God, he says that God puts on you for the sick. When I first read that, and we'll read it to you a little bit later on as we get into some things. When I first read that years ago, after uh, Will and Gertrude had sent it to me, uh, there was, I had questions about it. I said, okay, what's, I, I get this, you know, I hear there's this spirit of intercession and see, as a researcher, as a you know, military-minded person, I don't like gray areas. Right? I, I like, you know, one, two, three, let's lock it down. I like very simple, direct, no questions. And so uh, as I started looking at that, I, I actually called Will and said, it's, he says in this letter that there is a spirit of intercession, even for the sick that God can put on you. I said, w what is that? I said, now describe that to me. What did Lake believe about that. And he said, oh, that's very simple. He said, because uh, their ministry, Will and Gertrude's ministry, was intercession. That's what they, where they focused. Mostly Gertrude. Will's, Will's ministry was Gertrude, pretty much. His ministry was getting her around, getting her places, uh, you know, just taking care of her. And, and because everybody wanted to talk to her because she was John Lake's daughter. And so he recognized that he would kind of take the back seat to that. So, but he made sure that everything was good and everything was taken care of and all those details. Well, and he was also a school teacher by, by profession. So he was very systematic and very organized. And so he, whenever Gertrude would talk about her dad, he would ask pointed questions and get details. So I said all that to get to this point. Whenever you, and this was his answer about what Lake meant when he said intercession. He said, when he mentioned intercession, he was talking about when people are not in your presence. He said, when, they're, when they are in your presence, you don't enter into intercession generally. He said, very rarely would that actually happen. He said, but when they're at a distance, because you're not with them, because you can't see them. And now that, this was before the Internet, before you could Skype somebody or you know that kind of thing. He said, you had to be able to, because... Uh, whenever you weren't there, many times they would do what we've actually termed overkill because they don't know what's going on. So they would pray and maybe they'd be praying and the person is healed in five minutes. But because you're not in contact with that person, you don't know what's happening to them. So you are praying and commanding and you may do that for 45 minutes and you may walk around and you may command and you may go after this thing. And they were healed after, in five minutes after you started but you don't necessarily know it, so you keep on going, and that's the overkill part, right? And he said, but God can put that on you because what he means by that is this, and we have to be very careful. Reese Howell actually put out a book years ago called The Intercessor, and because of some experiences he had, he interpreted them a certain way, and because his book got pretty popular, people started grabbing a hold of what he experienced and started embracing it. And it was never meant to be embraced. Now, let me, let me explain what we're talking about. You probably have heard people talk about uh, intercession. And they even use scripture to say, well, we are entering into their sufferings. And that means whenever we start praying and interceding for this person, we get into the spirit. And when we get into the spirit and start interceding, then their symptoms sometimes comes on us so that we can experience their suffering and we enter into it. And then when we finish praying, uh, we know we beat it whenever that those symptoms leave us. We know they've left them. Right now, that was a very carnally minded uh, interpretation of what went on. Right. What actually happened. And it's not good. OK, first off. If it's not right for those symptoms to be on the person you're praying for, it's not right that they're on you, right? That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. So, but the enemy, knowing that, what happens is this. Uh, let me give you an example. I was in a situation one time where, uh, well, it was a profession at one point, where I was training uh, security for places, uh, 
clubs, nightclubs, that kind of stuff. It was a, a, basically I trained bouncers. And there was a situation because I was in a place and I'd been training and I was, it was a night we were going to let these guys kind of actually do it. And so we were there and a fight broke out as was usual in this place. And when it broke out, everybody just stood around and watched. These guys we had trained just stood there and kind of like, you know, what do we do? Well, these guys are grabbing bottles and all the other kind of stuff. So something has to be done pretty quick or somebody in some bystander is going to get hurt. So I ran over. And as soon as I got over, the first thing I did was kick this guy, right? Got his attention, right? And so whenever I got his attention, all of a sudden he left the guy he was fighting with and he came after me. Okay, that, and then we kind of got into it and then the other guys came in and then everything, it ended up okay. So bottom line is this, that's what happens when you enter into intercession. It is not that God is letting you feel their sufferings. It is that you have entered into the fight and you have now got the attention of this thing that is attacking them. And now that attention has left that person. And now that thing is coming after you. Right. So it's not you're entering into their sufferings. It is retaliation. You got that? So when that thing starts to retaliate to you, now you have to be aware of it. Now, most pe- most Christians don't understand this, so they just embrace it and go, oh yeah, I'm entering into the sufferings. And the devil is having a heyday in your life, right? And we've seen that, and people get really hurt by it and different things. But what we have to realize is that this is a retaliation, and we have to set ourselves to know and believe. Now listen, in the kingdom, everything works by faith. Everything is by faith. How you got in is how you operate. And so by faith, and and this is just an easy way to describe it, Faith is like flipping on a switch, right? This room in here was dark until somebody flipped on a switch and we had light, right? So this room was in one state and all it took was for one person to flip one switch and that state changed. You agree? You understand what I'm saying, right? It is exactly the same thing. You can be in a state of sickness, And the minute you flip on the switch of faith, you are now in a state of healing. Now, notice healing. Okay. I-N-G on the end. What does that mean? In the process of. Right. So the minute you flip on faith, you are in the process of healing. That's Mark 16. You begin to recover. Right. Doesn't always mean instantaneous change. Right. There is a change in the state. And now you're moving toward wholeness. And, you, and sometimes it is on that, that progressive state. Now, that's not what we, what we want. We want instant. Okay? If it's not instant on the street, it really doesn't help as a witness and as a sign. It needs to be instant, and you can get it instant, usually by pressing. But now let me, and these are notes you probably need to be making in, in your manual somewhere because they're not in your manual, actually. <clears throat> but it's one of the benefits of actually being here as opposed to just reading in the manual, right? I was at fire school, Dr. Michael Brown from Pensacola. I taught out there for uh, the the, uh, healing courses there. And I taught everybody and then they went out and they did it. It was great. They got good results. Everything was working. Then the next year I wasn't teaching there and they were teaching the same course. And the Brian Parkman, which is their healing uh, teacher there now, instructor there, is uh, trained under me. And so he's there teaching. And he called me one time. He said, Curry, I, I don't get it. Something's not, not right. He said, uh, when we did this last year, everything worked. And, it's going, and this, for this year, for some reason, he said, we, we see a lot of progressive healing, but we're not seeing as many instant. And he said, what, what's going wrong? I said, well, run me through. What are you, what are you doing? Get, take a, a, an actual scenario, an actual situation. Run me through exactly what you did and let me hear it. So he ran through this whole thing. And I said, all right, give me another one. And I had about two or three because I was trying to hear the similarity of what it was. And finally, uh, when I listened, I'm like, okay, here, here's what it is. I said, you're going out. I said, this isn't church. So you're not going to, you're not ministering healing in a church service where people automatically believe, where they're believing with you or anything else. I said, so this is a situation where you're taking the power of God to the streets and you are trying to deliver healing as a sign to unbelieving people. He said, yeah, exactly. That's, that's it. And I said, are you telling them that the kingdom of God is at hand. He said, well, no, actually. I said, yeah, I didn't think so because I didn't hear that. I said, that's one of the things that Jesus said. When you go, when he told his disciples, go out and talk to people 
and to minister to them. He said, when you go, heal the sick and say unto them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Right. I said, so say that. I said, it's not about a formula. It's not an incantation or anything. I said, but you need to let them know why are you doing this? You are showing them what it's like to live in the kingdom. In the kingdom, there is power, there is freedom, there is healing. That's the kingdom. And what they are experiencing is the kingdom of God coming near to them. I said, you need to basically proclaim the kingdom. He said, all right, all right, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So then as a week or two later, I got another call. He said, that was it. That, that solved it. He said, everything's right back up. It's instant. It's good. And I said, so that's one of the things that we always try to, to remember. When we're on the street, there is a difference between ministering in here and on the street. Now, I minister very similar, both here and the street. But very honestly, when people come here, they expect a certain thing. And we can, we can work around that. That's, that's not a problem. We can do that. But on the street, it's a totally different thing. Why? Because on the street, I don't expect, if, if you come to me here, I may not ask you if you're born again. I kind of assume you are, right? Especially if you come up, you know certain things, you say certain things. Uh, you know, there's all the Christian catch words that everybody knows, the little buzzwords everybody knows, right? And so, but on the street, you don't get that. So on the street, you have to be more proactive, more aggressive toward the sickness, not toward the person, but toward the sickness. And so many times you may have to tell them because you'll start praying or, you know, commanding or something. Uh, many times they'll expect certain things. Here, when people come here, they expect me to pray for them. Well, there is no prayer for healing, right? It's a command. You command the body to be healed. You command the sickness to go. You command the devil to go. Whatever it is you do, but it's all command. It's no prayer. You're not talking to God about it. Right? God's opinion, his position is already settled. His word is forever settled in heaven. That's it. So you're not talking to him about it. Right. So whenever they come to you, but when people come to you in here, many times they expect a prayer. So I will start by praying and I will pray to God. And I say, Father, I thank you that you have allowed me to take part in your victory over this sickness and disease. And I just thank you for it now. And I give you glory for it right now in the name of Jesus. Now, how many of you know that's the entire prayer right there? That's it. Now, now I turn to them. Right. But what I do is I, I put two parts of this together. The prayer to God is one thing. The commanding is another, but if you kind of link them together and as soon as you finish praying, you go right to commanding, the people still think you're praying, see, because they expect prayer. And so now do I need to pray to the father about it? No, not at all. I don't need to say anything. All I need to do is walk up and say, in Jesus name, be healed. That's it. That's, that's the sum total. I can touch them. I can take them by the hand. I can lay hands on their head. All of that is, is it doesn't matter, right? The method in that sense doesn't matter. But because people expect a certain thing, I've actually had people get upset because when you know, bless God, I drove four hours to get here, you know, and all I did is walk by and go be healed. I, I didn't come here for that. You know, I, you know, it, it cost me $200 to get here. I expect a $200 prayer is what I expect. You say, I'm serious. We, we get that kind of stuff, you know, and, and I try to explain to them, you don't understand. I can, listen, I can stand here all day and have you come up here? No, this isn't going to sound very spiritual, right? But I could take my, see that knuckle up right there? I could do that one. I could do that one. Which other one? But let's say I do that one, right? And you could come up here and I could stand here all day and just hit you. Just like that. In the same spot. I mean, you know, fairly quick, that's going to start hurting. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not, if, if I'm just, do, just doing this, right? I'm not standing back and bam and bam. I'm not doing that. I'm just that. Just constantly. If I keep doing that, it's going to hurt, right? Eventually it's going to hurt. Or... I could take that 50 times, because if I do that 50 times, it's going to leave a bruise. Or I could take that 50 times and put it all into one hit, right? And if I put all that 50 hits into one hit, and I hit with the strength of the 50 in one, it'll all be done that quick. And they're right. And I don't have to stand there all day going boom, boom, boom. So I can just do it one time, one good hit, and it's over. Right? That's the way most people, most people want prayer. They think it's Prayer, prayer. We gotta, we gotta bombard the gates of heaven. We gotta bombard heaven with a prayer. I mean, if you're bombarding the gates of heaven, your guns are pointed in the wrong direction. <laughs> heaven is not your problem, right? You are to bombard the gates of hell. Yes. You hear know that? Hallelujah. And and it doesn't take all day long to do it. The minute you say in the name, it's done. You got it? 
The minute you do that, those gates, they open. Why? Because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the ruling, governing council that Jesus birthed on this earth. Amen. Right? Amen. You have authority over all devils, over all sickness, and that authority, listen, this is not a standoff. Right? We win. It is that simple. And all you have to do is be convinced of the fact that you win. See, if you think you're going to stand there and go back and forth, you're going to go back and forth. Why? The devil knows in the end he's going to lose. But if he can postpone it, he will. Why? Because the longer he postpones it, the more likely you are to quit. So the key is to hit it good and strong one time. Right? And just blast that thing and let the dust settle and say, okay, how's that? Right? Well, that's better. Okay, wait. Better? Not, not gone, but better. Yeah, better. All right, let's hit it again. And you, you'll surprise people. Pray again? Well, yeah, it's better, but it's not gone, right? But the fact that we, that we made it better shows that we hit, shows that we, had some, that we did something, right? So if we do that, let's just do it again. And let's just do it again until it's gone, right? And if we do it again until it's gone, people say, well, but uh, if we do that, aren't we moving into unbelief? Uh, no, because the minute they say it's better, let me tell you, your belief just went up. Right? You're not moving in unbelief. You're like, oh, yeah. See, that's, that's the shark uh, smelling the blood in the water. Right? You, you've, already, you've already got it. You're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I, I've, I've told you before, there was a particular person that had uh, issues in the body. And we prayed. And the thing, they said, oh, yeah, it's gone there. But it's over here now. It moved. And I'm like, okay, has it, moved, has it ever moved before? No. Uh, so, obviously, this isn't a coincidence. That it just so happened that the minute we prayed, it moved, and that, that, that the two weren't related. I said, the fact that we prayed and it moved proved we hit it and that we can move it. And they're like, yeah, okay. I said, so let's pray again and just move it on the rest of the way out. I said, because it can't, if we can move it, we can move it out. And they're like, yeah. So we prayed again. And because a lot of people are trained that you only pray once. And, and honestly, a lot of people stay sick because of that. So we've learned if the healing rooms operated on a 30-day basis, then it only makes sense that we can minister over and over again. Why wait till tomorrow? Let's just hit it two or three times right now, right? And get it gone. And so after, and you have to remember, every time you say in the name of Jesus, the Bible says demons tremble every time they hear that name, right? So every time you pray, you're shaking them up again. And they're right. So just use that name, now, you know. A lot more we can get into, but I want to get you into this. I want to, I want to get this chapter done. <laughs>